We can start with our memory verse for this week. If you want to bring it up. Second Corinthians 4, 11 and 12. We who live are constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Let's say that one more time. Second Corinthians 4, 11 and 12. We who live are constantly being delivered to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Last week, our memory verse was Galatians 6, 9, which said, do not lose heart in doing good. Um, and there's nothing better than treating others the way Jesus treated others. And that's how I see manifesting the life of Jesus um, as far as my relationship with others is concerned. Um, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, just a couple of chapters earlier, verse 14 and 15, it talks about how God uh, manifests through us a sweet aroma of the knowledge of him and that we are the fragrance of Christ. Um, what is this fragrance of Christ? Um, I was thinking of it in the context of flavor of Christ, how we can taste. Um, what did Jesus do every day? Like we, we read about his ministry in the gospels, but what, what did he do on an everyday basis? Um, he probably spent most of his time with his family and his close friends, his disciples. Um, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, Peter writes about Jesus. He says, you know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power and how he went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And I want to stress that line that says, he went about doing good. In the context of both this week's memory verse as well as last week, you know, we are called to manifest the life of Jesus in our, in our mortal flesh. Um, and what does that mean for me? Um, what do I do when I don't see that? Um, Jesus... Um, uh, Jesus' life is the best life that we can, we can live. Um, but as I said, he, he spent most of his time with his family, and it's the same for me too. I spend most of my time with my family, with my friends. Um, even though we read about his ministry, um, the majority of his time was spent with close um, people who are close to him. And I can take uh, encouragement from that, is that Jesus, although we know his ministry, that most of his life was an everyday life with people that he was close to. And it says that he did good. He went about doing good. Um, when I think about my life, um, I want to do good. I want to go about doing good, but I may not see uh, that I do good all the time. And then the verse from last week reminds us, do not lose heart. I, do, I shouldn't lose heart in doing good. Just because I couldn't do good today does not mean that I should lose heart in doing good tomorrow. So we press on, we do not grow weary, as it says. And um, the word good reminded me of uh, the fruit of the spirit that we read about, uh, goodness. Um, I've often thought about all the other fruits, but never about goodness. Uh, love, joy, peace, patience. Yes, this is the things that I always think about. I want to grow in these things. I rarely think about growing in goodness. And what that reminded me is of growing up in India, the fruit that we are very familiar with is the mango, which if you see uh, commercials about mango juice or mangoes, the word goodness is often associated with mangoes because inside a mango, that's all that's in there. It's goodness, <laughs> you know, flavor and goodness. And that's what life of Jesus is like. Inside is... Now, some people might not like the taste. That's, that's different, but I can still objectively say that is the best uh, life that I want to live. Um, uh, our memory verse says that we, are, we who live are constantly being delivered over, uh, over to death for Jesus' sake. And I see that in the context of the mango. It's like, who is delivering me? Who is the one doing the delivery? Uh, it's the Lord. 
uh, he's delivering, he's giving us opportunities to die for Jesus' sake. It's like he's putting this mango on a platter and serving it to those who are around me and saying, this is for you. Now the question is, when that mango gets squeezed, what comes out of it? Is it goodness or is it something bitter or something tasteless? Because uh, that's the quality of the mango. Um, I can often lose heart uh, when I'm squeezed and there's no sweetness that comes out of me. And there's only sometimes bitterness, sometimes just tastelessness, not refreshing goodness, and I can lose heart. Uh, but this is a promise of God that we are being delivered constantly so that the life of Jesus may be manifest. So I don't lose heart. I don't lose heart in doing good over and over again as I'm being constantly being delivered on this platter to my family, even as I don't see the mango squeeze and good stuff coming out, um, I do it over and over again. I'm, I'm happy that I'm being constantly delivered. We, we just sang about great is his mercy towards me. And I see that in the opportunity he gives me over and over again to serve the same people, to speak kindly to the same people. The same people that I spoke rudely, rudely to yesterday, I get an opportunity again to speak kindly to them. And I see that as God's great mercy, that he's giving us an opportunity over. We're constantly being delivered um, to death for Jesus' sake so that his life will be manifest in my mortal body. And we, we know that Jesus only did that to the power of the Holy Spirit and we, can, we have access to the same Holy Spirit so I can have the faith that he will do this in my life as well. That goodness is what will come out of my life as well. Hello family. Um, I would like to share what uh, God has laid in my heart. Um, last week uh, we were out of town and when we came back home we found a pipeline inside our garage wall was broken and the water was all over the place. Um, I understood from one of the brothers in our church that the pipeline leakage is a very serious issue, especially if it is inside the wall. The reason is, as the time passes, the water leakage can, can cause serious damages. This could be insulation, ceiling, carpet, hardwood flooring, and lastly, a structural damage as well. And it becomes very expensive to fix, maybe thousands of dollars. I was asking Lord why this has happened to me, what you are trying to teach me. What is it? Uh, this is what God has taught me. God gave a beautiful picture and a spiritual lesson through this, similar uh, to the water leakage, similar to the water leakage in the pipeline inside the wall. I see us if I if I, I can see a small bitterness that can spring forth in my heart about anyone due to the way they acted or spoke or whatever it is. And they, and they, they may be a relative, colleagues, friends, and it could be even my brothers and sisters in the church. But if I leave this leakage of bitterness unattended, it can cause severe damage or even structural damage to my spiritual life. The damage is given in Ephesians 4.31. 4.31. Ephesians 4.31. In one of the translations, it says, Get rid of your bitterness, hot tempers, anger, loud quarreling, loud quarreling cursing and hatred. In this, in this verse, we see a progression started with bitterness. Initially, it started with bitterness and then it led to losing temper and then anger and then to loud quarreling and then cursing and finally leading to hatred which is the structural damage which I was talking about. Matthew 6, 6.15 It says, If you do not forgive others, then your father will not forgive your transgression. Hence, it's very important to attend this bitterness immediately. Coming back to the pipeline breakage which I was talking about, uh, when the pipeline was broken, my first reaction was immediately shut down the valve which will avoid any further leakage and damage, which is the picture of me closing my mouth, not discussing with anyone about what has happened, and stop meditating on what things which cause the bitterness, which will avoid further damage. The second reaction for me is, call the handyman immediately to fix this. This is the picture of me running to the Lord and asking help me to take away the bitterness. 
In Exodus 15, 22 to 26, Exodus 15, 22 to 26, we see uh, Moses led the Israelites to the wilderness. They found no water for three days. And when they came to a place called Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mara because the water was full of bitter. But then when Moses cried to the Lord, the Lord showed him a tree. He threw it into the waters and the water became sweet. Similarly, when we see bitterness in our heart, we can cry to our Lord and he will just not just show the tree, but also the Jesus Christ who is crucified in the tree. And he will help us to understand how much we are forgiven, how much he loves us, which in turn converts our bitterness into a sweet water. The sweet water is forgiving the person, loving the person to whom you had bitterness against, blessing them and praying for them. May God help us. Amen.